In today's video, I'm working on Tiny Art Rolodex cards. I have a new Rolodex holder and I'm going to be making about six to eight cards in this one. I love Rolodex cards and as a matter of fact, I started this quite well about three years ago and I have been adding ever since. These ones go in an orientation where you look, I guess, from an up-down perspective, and then you flip it over, and then you have something on the other side this way, right? And it's been challenging to do such small little collages on these pieces of um, Rolodex card. But it's been also quite a lot of fun. So that's what I want to do in continuing with another Rolodex project. So I have this one. This one is new. And what I want to do with this one is I'm going to keep these tabs. And in under each tab, I want to do a series of cards on a theme depending on you know the letter that's that's there so for example i have v and a couple of years ago was the anniversary of the passing of the 19th amendment where's my card hold on one second this one Nin 19th amendment and so there was a lot of you know things a lot of papers interesting papers that i could find for that event so I created a whole series of eight cards on women's suffrage and just, you know, created this, these cards. So that's V for vote. Um, and so what I want to do today is I want to go and make some cards in the S category. And S is going to be for signature because I have some new things to play with. I have these uh, stamps, signature stamps. In my haste to get them open, I misplaced the labeling, so I don't have that to show you. But these are some new stamps from Kathy Holden. And I have done some, some a video uh, with some items of hers in the past. She has some new things out coming now. And including these these uh, cling stamps of signatures and she also has these metal die cuts i'll pull these out so you can see these are going to be fun as well i don't know if i'm going to use in any of my rolodex cards but they're fun to look at nonetheless so these are just little bits of interesting little die cuts that are done in a metal finish or and it doesn't have foil on it it's just paper but the printing is done so well that it very it keeps the shine of a lot of these images right they're they're really cool this is so neat This one is cool too, I like this one. Right? So there's lots of fun things in here. Metal bits, hinges, buttons, um, and uh, stuff for like locks, plates, things like that, trophies. <laughs> so yeah, and there's a couple little coins. Awesome, lots of fun stuff in here. So these are out now from Kathy Holden, Flea Market Finds. And I will put the link in the description box if you are interested in finding these. So I have these signatures and I have my little acrylic blocks. So I'm gonna take some off and use them for creating some tiny art Rolodex cards that I can use in here. Okay, so let me take out a bunch of these cards. These, these are rather thin, so I will probably need to double them up. I don't, I don't think I need all of these. 
just put some back. Uh, double them up, but that's okay because if I do one one side and then do this for the other side, then I can put them together and then it'll be quite nice. And I like the idea of just doing a collage on one side, leaving the other side blank and then gluing it later because I can always decide which pairs, you know, how I want to combine the fronts and backs of multiples at a time. All right, so let me move this out of the way. So let me see how many I have here. One, two, three, four, five. I need one more. Six. So I'm going to start with six pieces. I think I want these to match. The coloring is off a little bit on this guy. So six pieces. So this is going to be three Rolodex cards. One, two, three. That's fine. That's fine. And with this, with this, um, Rolodex holder, I'm, the orientation that I'm doing is left to right. It's, it's, it's this way rather than this way, right? I also worked on some over here, A for architecture, and you know, you can see it's in a left to right format. Okay, so that's my goal for these ones. Right, so what do I do? How, do? how do I start? What should I do? Right, this is always like the first, like a tiny bit of panic. You're like, oh, it's blank, it's white. What do I do? How, how do I, what's the first steps, right? <laughs> that happens to me too. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna just put some backgrounds, some rubber stamping backgrounds just to add something to it. So I'm going to put these here because I'm probably going to be doing some rubber stamping. I don't know if I'm going to do all of them at once, but who knows, right? I have a bunch of background stamps that I can use. I have something like this. These are really cool. I do like this. Here's some more squiggles. I have this and I have this. These, these dots are really nice. And then I also have something like this where I could, you know, do the whole thing and it'll just do a whole line of text on the back. So I might use that as well. Um, I have blue. I like blue ink. Also, maybe gray would be good. I could do this dark purple possibly. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, um, let's see. Signatures will be at the end, so I don't need to worry about those right now. Let's do some inking. I think I'm gonna start with this one. This one, it's tricky because if you, if you get the text just a slightly bit crooked, the whole thing is not gonna, it's gonna look not right unless you really make it crooked um, and I don't want to risk it so what I will do is put some ink on here and I'm just gonna press it on this way And it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be on 100%. I could be missing a little, a few areas, that's okay. Just as long as I have the most of it. Oh, that looks nice, definitely. Okay, let me do one more since I have it out. Um, I'm gonna use a different color. I will use this green.
Looks good. I like it. Maybe I will do... I'll do blue and purple. Let's see what happens. So let me do some blue first. And I'm not putting it on very heavy. All right, so this is just, just for the sake of having me have something on the backs of these cards, the very first layer. It just helps me not be overwhelmed by blank, blank white paper. So now, what kind of papers do I want to add to this? I have my drawer with little bits and if I, you know, want to just start pulling stuff out and lay layering it down, I can do that. I can also go in here and look for some inspiration. This one has background stamping and then it just has a few little random paper bits on it nothing exciting at all but just the fact that the textures of the paper are different the ages are different um, that makes it interesting right here's another one of the architecture theme this one I did in an orientation up down um, let's see this one I did multiple different kinds of papers and then I put the rubber stamp on top, rubber stamping on top of the papers. Lots of background stamps and then just papers on top, right? Here's another one, background stamps. I have two postage stamps and then, and then just a piece of paper right down the middle. So, and then this one has three pieces. This paper, this paper, and this piece at the bottom. So these are not complicated. These are not complicated. And if you have some examples where you can go back and look through things that you've done in the past, if it's an old junk journal, an old glue book, to give you ideas, that is really helpful. Here's more rubber stamping in the back. Two tiny little pieces a postage stamp and then a postmark stamp, rubber stamping. Simple, very simple concepts. Let's start with three, three pieces per collage. So right now I'm just I'm just picking out pieces from here and laying them down. I don't have an idea of what I'm doing yet. I just am looking for interestingness. Um, is that an actual word? I'm going to use it anyway. <laughs> just things that are, you know, little bits, little bits and pieces. This is a good one. Okay, for this one, this is very big, all this, all this stuff. So let's make it more interesting. Let's cut off some of this, maybe some of this, and take some of this maybe. That would be good. Now I haven't put any of my signatures yet. What I want to do is I will take these and I have some little end scraps little scraps of paper like this 
I'm going to stamp onto these scraps and then the signatures are this they're gonna they're gonna go on this way because I don't know I'm, I'm a little concerned well on some cases I could probably stamp directly on but if I do that in other cases I think it's gonna get lost so it's better for me to stamp on a a random piece of paper and then glue the paper on to the rest if that makes sense I have this tool I'm going to be using this just a little bit you can find this on Amazon now um, I will let, let me show you how I use it so let's say I know that I want to have this here and I want the punch to be here, here, something like that. So how I use this is I can turn this over and I can see the holes where the punch is going to be, right? So with my pencil marks, I, I, I put the, the marks where I know I want the, the holes to be, and then I can slide it in and punch exactly where right okay so here I've got it so now now I can lay it in where I want just like that for the little tiny ones like right in here what I will probably do is just fold it over because it's such a, it's just a corner essentially. So once I have it glued down, then I can glue it or fold it over. But for these bigger pieces, this is how I like to use the punch. And this punch is not perfect. It's not perfect. It leaves a little bit of a gap. I don't know if you can see it very well. Between the edge, this edge of the paper and this edge of the card, there's like two millimeters three three millimeters which is it's it can be quite a lot but i don't care to me it's fine it's better than nothing if i leave three millimeters on this side then it just balances all out and it, it doesn't matter so that's the way that i i like to use it okay right so let me glue down these pieces i will be right back and then we will go about putting on some stamped signatures. All right, so I've glued everything down and I went through my metal bits and I actually selected one for each of these cards. I didn't think that I would find interesting bits for these tiny Rolodex cards, but actually I did. So I'm just gluing these down. And now the last thing I want to do is put on some signatures. So I'm not going to put signatures on all of the cards, but I do have some spots right here. I want to put something up here and something right here as well. So in this case, this is very easy because I can just go ahead and stamp it right on there. So I'm choosing green, this green color. I want it to stand out. And if, I was afraid that if I do it in black, it's just not going to show up enough. So first, I'm going to do a sample just to see how it looks. Oh yeah, that looks fabulous. So let me do this again. Perfect. Love it. W. Moody. Mr. Moody. <laughs> All right. Now, for, for up here, I need to put it on a piece of paper. And what I like to do is this is a very vintage piece of paper. And so I'm just going to use the bottom most part. So, and I won't need that much actually. And you, you know what, actually let me stamp it first and then I will cut it out. So 
So I'm going to use a different signature and I'm gonna go with, see there's, there's some dark blue there, so I think I'm gonna go with this dark blue. So what I will do is I will stamp on here and I want it close to the edge because I'm gonna be able to cut it off. Gosh, that is a beautiful signature. These, these really stamp nicely, that's for sure. So now I can take my ruler or cutting tool and I can just very carefully tear it out. And that's gonna go up here. And see, you can tell that it's vintage paper because it's just slightly, you know, colored. Okay, and the last one I wanna put right down here. I just have this tiny little scrap. I think I'm gonna go with green again. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now I have my cards complete. Now I need to put them to, to attach them, glue them together. So is this the, the orientation that I want them? I want them paired this way. I guess it doesn't really matter because they're kind of all very similar. Um, see, there's a bird here and there's a bird here. So let me switch this. There's also birds and birds. So let me switch this. I don't want the birds together. So let's do it separately. Okay. So now if I go like this, this is going to be one card, one card, one card, and one card. Okay. These are the final cards front and back. They're super thick now, now that I've doubled them up. Really, really nice. Happy with them. They turned out great. Now, what's left to do is to stick them in here. So going to S. These taps are really in bad shape. I don't even know if they're gonna last me that long. I don't know if there's a way to reinforce them. I'll have to think about it. Um, but for now, put them in like this. And I've got three front and back Rolodex cards done in my Rolodex holder. Yay! So let me know in the comments what kind of tiny art you are working on. I hope that you do have some interest in creating some Rolodex cards art. They're a lot of fun to do and to exchange. Um, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button so that more people can find it. And thanks so much for watching. I will see you the next time. <laughs>